Overwatch is changing forever. They rolled out a ton of new updates. I suspect now that Bobby Kotick has left and we're in a new year, I think the Overwatch team is actually able to start making some somewhat major changes to the game to see if they can improve it. Before I experience these changes myself, let's go over a brief overview of what actually changed. All ranks have been reset. You will be updated on your rank after every match during placement and wins matter. You get updated about your rank every match now, and they've added a lot more transparency in all of competitive. Modifiers to your competitive rank can now be seen and will affect how you rank up. For example, if you're on a win streak or a lose streak, that will affect your placement. There are now competitive challenges after every season, which are individual challenges uh, based on competitive. And there's an entirely new rank, champion. Jade weapons are now here. I know a lot of people are like, why Jade? And I kind of agree, that's kind of a an odd choice. Jade's odd, for sure. They are, you know, adding more and more weapon skins, and I don't know how to feel about it. Old competitive points are converted into legacy points, and legacy points can be spent. You can still buy gold weapons. Okay, so the weapons are purchased with legacy competitive points, and now we have new competitive points for unlocking jade weapons. Okay, that's pretty sweet. It's like, it's actually really more of an emerald, isn't it? It's definitely gonna work much better on some characters than others, which I think is what makes it kind of odd. And, you know, they may end up adding other variants. I don't know. It's kind of cool. It's just weird that it's green, you know. I think a lot of people can agree with that. But there you have it. You'll still be able to get gold weapons. You might have to wait till the end of the season before your legacy points get converted. You can now endorse friends. I think you're limited to like once every 12 hours, but you can endorse friends now, which is uh, an interesting choice. I mean, kind of a little quality of life thing. Speaking of quality of life, we have new crosshairs have been added. So if we go under controls under general, I really don't know why it's here, but we now have a bunch of different options, but there's all kinds of, ooh, let's do a purple one, eh? Ooh. You've always been able to do it, but yeah, they have added new colors and new options. It's, uh, I don't know, another little quality of life thing. It's definitely nice to be able to customize that and kind of make it into like whatever you want. Ooh, Tri-Wing. A lot of shooters seemingly have been uh, implementing like a lot of crosshair customization. So you can really dial it into something that you really like. If that's something that you find important. I don't know, that's a good thing. I mean, it's basically an accessibility and customization uh, point. So that's pretty cool. I think the most controversial change out of all of this is going to be like the hitbox slash projectile changes. Bullets as well as other missiles and various things will have a larger profile, making it easier to hit shots. Even though I'm the greatest gamer in the world, sometimes my aiming and my skills are not so great. Like, especially when your enemy is like really teeny tiny, like way across the map. I would think like, man, it is actually so difficult to just like click on their head when they're like moving around and like the movement of Overwatch characters is insane when they're player led. I have honestly thought to myself, like there's been a few shots that I've taken on the enemy where I'm like, okay, I don't know how much closer it could have possibly been right like the hit registration has has in my opinion been a little unforgiving i know you're gonna say easy scape making this game too easy making it too casual just get good practice at the range i get it i should but you know what i don't think this is a horrible change they might have overdone it they might have overdone it let's see if they did i mean okay come on that didn't even hit i'm intentionally not hitting i'm aiming okay that did hit Dude, like that was, <laughs> I can't even believe I moved my cursor that little. See, all these videos I saw online, people are like right here and they're like, oh, oh, it did register. <laughs> okay. I mean, that is like 100% not even on her. This could be good for us bronze players. All right, let's see. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little much. They might... The thing about, like, hitboxes is you have a whole character, right? Here's their whole body, and it's, you know, yay wide. I don't know, man. Characters move around and shit a lot. Like, I don't think it's the end of the world to, like, register a headshot, like, there. But it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, it's a little much. Kind of exciting. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe, like, a lot of the hit scan classes and, uh, McCree and all them. Maybe, uh, maybe every class that requires aim will be a lot more fun to play now. Many heroes have had their health pools increased as well. This is another pretty crazy big change. I mean, it's, it's not a ton. We're talking, like, anywhere from 25 to 100 HP per character, but, like, that does make a huge difference. That's actually pretty significant. We will see how that turns out. Now, two new passive abilities have been added that are kind of strange. Damage classes, when they attack someone and they hit shots, they will now apply a debuff that reduces healing received by 20%. And I, I, I don't really understand why they would do that exactly. They increase everybody's health, reduce the amount of healing received. The next change is all classes are able to regenerate health now. So when you're out of combat, you start to gain 20 health per second after five seconds of not taking any damage. Between those three changes, where you have a 20% heal debuff, heroes automatically heal, and then you also have this health pool increase, I'm really just not sure where this is going, and this is across all characters. I will just have to kind of play the game and see how it feels and see, you know how it actually feels what it what what it's playing like they also in increased melee damage which is interesting i don't hate that to be honest i i do feel like melee could be a little more valuable for sure and finally they made some tweaks to a lot of the maps on junker town interestingly enough they added a lot of junk cleared up some sight lines by adding a bunch of objects so don't be surprised and don't go into some kind of mandela psychosis over whether or not that car was there as far as individual hero changes i'm not going to go through all of them there's so many really i didn't see anything totally crazy it seemed like some bug fixes and maybe some slight balancing issues but uh, relatively unchanged there. They also did a little bit of a, I guess, rework of Farah. I mean, it really is kind of a rework. I can no longer, like, just randomly use my jet. Okay, there I can use it. But it runs out much faster. I really don't fully understand how this works. And then you can use my jump jet, which is my assigned to my right click. Jump jet, fly rapidly upwards and grant some fuel. Okay, so we can get some fuel from that. I am not super sure about this rework. I can imagine people really not liking this. It does almost feel like a nerf. Air superiority has been reduced. I'm wondering if this is why people are talking about the end of Farmer C. Whoa, that's pretty cool. What the hell is that? <laughs> they got the Mobussy. And of course, in our battle pass, we have our new Moira skin. New Hero Mastery Gauntlet. Wait, what is that? The Gauntlet? So there's a new Hero Mastery quest? That's pretty interesting. So it looks like it might be a co-op. <laughs> That's a pretty cool skin. What the hell is going on? Oh! <laughs> what did that mean? <laughs> what the hell? That ending sequence is a bit sketchy. Now, there's two events going on right now. Every time a new season is released, there's always so much going on, it's so goddamn overwhelming. So we have a co-op cosmic crisis. There's also the Chinese New Year going on. We have a new shop skin, Heartbreaker, Reaper. That is a really cool 
skin, not gonna lie. This is like how I used to dress in middle school. So what are the extra skins they're selling? Of course, okay. Very odd Cthulhu Sigma skin. This is a super cool skin, but it is kind of bizarre. Definitely going with like a Cthulhu vibe for this whole thing. Harbinger is a really cool skin, actually. I was looking at this. I'm pretty down with this. It's pretty sweet. I like how his eyes are covered. Of course, the battle pass. So if we buy the premium battle pass, we immediately get, I think that's soldier. I want to take a pixie at the battle pass. This is a really cool soldier skin for sure too. It's like this weird necromancer soldier dude. I have no idea. That's kind of creepy, but this is free in the battle pass. Damn, I like that. That's a pretty darn cool skin. Kind of ironic because like her eyes are closed and she's all about the light. You know what I mean? The ramen noodle bastion. Oh, look at the little, I, what are those? It, they're called uh, water chestnuts. Is that what it is? Eh, he's got a little lantern. All right, that's actually pretty cool. His an egg is his eye, a ramen egg. I like ramen bastion. Ramen bastion is pretty cool, actually. <laughs> I thought that was kind of gonna be a little dumb, but that's actually pretty funny. Oh, gross. Symbol ape, very creepy. That's actually a crazy May skin. That's like pretty different from everything that she had. This is reminding me of a movie I haven't seen. These are all very creepy, necromancery, sacrificial, ritualistic. This is just the, the creepy ass battle pass, bro. A lot of eyeballs. <laughs> okay. Oh, Ringmaster Winston. That's pretty cool. And the fact that his little jetpacks are cannons is awesome. What is his weapon like? Oh, dude. It's got little carnival lights. What we are all here for. As a Moira main, I am excited that she is the next mythic. I definitely want a really cool skin. I was disappointed that I couldn't get Lilith Moira. At first, I wasn't the biggest fan of this skin, and I'm still kind of on the fence about it. I want to see if there will be enough options to make it interesting. Looks like we mainly have the weapon and then the colors. What exactly does the weapon change? Okay, it changes her whole glove. It seemed pretty cool. Probably have to see him in game. That looks like it has some rings and some stuff going on. I really like the eyes of Sauron kind of eyeballs. Oh, the void is really cool. It's also a little confusing without her like red hair and face and the creepy masks are really cool. I do wish it had more options. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. We might be saved here. I do like that color quite a lot. That color scheme might save this whole skin for me. Pink's not bad. Either way, I think I'm gonna be very happy to have this skin. Everything in the battle pass seems pretty cool. It's kind of like Void or Cthulhu themed and everything in the battle pass is a little creepy actually, but it's still pretty cool. I'm glad Moira has the mythic skin. Very glad actually. Uh, I mean, Moira is kind of one of my mains and I don't really have that many great skins. The Mythic will be fantastic. I haven't played the competitive rework yet, so I am not really sure how that's going to feel. I haven't played any of the events either. I'll probably make some videos on those in the future. The balancing overall doesn't seem too bad. I mean, honestly, the game didn't change a whole lot. However, the self-healing is pretty crazy. It's pretty amazing to like be able to do that. Honestly, it feels pretty good, but it is nice to have like a little bit of independence, especially in like death match, which is kind of like a minor thing, but there's some other game modes where it's uh, pretty nice to have. The projectile size is going to be something that's a little bit of a problem. I do think it's probably a little overtuned and needs to be pulled back a bit, but uh, we will see how they approach that. They might tweak it a little bit. And there's definitely a lot of negative feedback surrounding that change. But anyway, I'm looking forward to season nine and we're going to make some other videos exploring some of these other features in the near future. I'll see you there, gamers. Don't forget to check out my other gaming videos. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. And don't forget to subscribe for more, and I'll see you later, alright? I'll see you later, gamers.